All right, we're recording. What rolls down hills alone or in pairs and over your neighbor's dog? It's quick for a snack. It fits in your bag. It's log, log, log. It's log, it's log. It's big, it's heavy, it's wood. It's log, it's log. It's better than bad. It's good. Everyone wants a log. You're going to love it, log. Everyone wants a log. Log from Blamo. Today's uh, lesson is sponsored by uh, Blamo, a um, company that makes logs for kids. Is that sufficiently torturous enough? Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're actually not sponsored by anyone. <laughs> I'm just trying to get sponsored, though. Are we? Is that even? I, th I think that there's like, we had a module about that. There's code conduct, something or other. It's true, yeah. We're not allowed to profit from uh, anything that we create is the property of Montgomery County Public Schools. <laughs> okay, we're doing logs today. Logs. Logs, Ooh. logs, logs. They're big, they're heavy, they're wood. What no, the heck not. is a log? <laughs> oh, thank you, Mr. Kirk. Should I go by Mr. K? Mr. K? No, because no. my my high school band teacher was Mr. K, and he's also like like he's very similar like head shape and hair color to you. So that really confused me. Maybe like a, a past life. He's still alive. Yeah. He teaches, okay. He so what's on a past life? Oh, you know, I always wanted to be a band director. If I ever go back to school, problem with going back to school for band directors, that's four more years. That's not a that's thing a you can time. do, and it's not a thing you can do in a couple of years. Hey, look, it's today. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> I'll get rid of my attempt at a crab. And it is now. All right, so we are looking at logarithms today. We don't, have, we don't know what a logarithm is. It's a very useful function. Um, we'll briefly talk about like, why it's even called a logarithm, but we have a new function. Let's get it. All right, so I got a, uh, a function that we are familiar with here, Mrs. Contreras, an exponential. What are your thoughts? We've been told to graph them. Yeah, well, graphing that, that's not too hard. We just get all reliable, plug in zero, and do it at one. And then um, we know oh, our wow. asymptote. I like that's that it's like a very, like, it's a whisper. Oh, wow. Oh, it's wow. <laughs> it's your like, old man voice. It's my prospector voice. I watched Toy Story 2 recently, the best of the Toy Stories. Oh, no. Let's keep going. Let's Absolutely keep going. Not. Absolutely not. <laughs> Toy Story 3, my goodness. Yeah, it was pretty good. I do remember crying in the movie theater when I saw three, but two, the most quotable of the Toy Stories. I can remember literally zero quotes from Toy Story 2. Are you kidding me? Run like the wind, bullseye. Mm -hmm. I am your father. That's a ripoff of everything. <laughs> but it's in the movie. It's the only one that, uh, that uh, references Star Wars, so... That's another reason. All right, we're, we're graphing an exponential. We graph the happy point, which we now call O-reliable. It's mm -hmm. a better name than the happy point. We have our asymptote. And then uh, in my answer key, don't forget everyone, there's an answer key to these. Um, I made it a couple years ago. A couple years ago, I was cool with two points, the um, O-reliable and another point. But I've, since then, I kind of want three points. That's what we said last time. So disregard what that answer key says. We want three points. We got one. Mrs. Contreras, give me two more. Uh, if we plug in one, we get out two, and, uh, well, if we do three, then that's nice, it's still, it's eight, three, eight. Three, eight, yeah. And I'm gonna get four, just because we can, right? Sure. I mean, three- so Two points to four. <laughs> three minimum. I'm gonna get a negative one in there, too, two to the negative one. Oh. Let's get that. This is um, called Overkill. <laughs> Over. Great song by uh, Men at Work. Anyways, let's continue. Um, they asked us to graph the inverse function. Oh, what Not the reciprocal. Was the inverse? The inverse. Uh, um, I don't remember. There's something the, with reflections. Okay. Yeah, do is we that, have a rule for this already? Switchy switchy? Is that switchy. the silly thing we said? Switchy switchy. But like, we we don't switch have... X and Y. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. I was going to say, though, we don't have currently a function that is the inverse of an exponential. That's true. If I said on a restricted domain, what's the inverse of an x squared, what would you say? 
Uh, root x. Root x. Um, a lot of the functions that we've dealt with have inverses. One over x's inverse was also was just one over x. It was the inverse of itself. That was kind of cool. We don't have a rule for this. Um, maybe that's the thing we're going to answer today. So um, if you want to reflect over the line y equals x, well, that's a switchy switchy. Give me some coordinates of our new function. Coordinates for our new function. Well, we just switch our inputs and our outputs, right? So we have uh, one zero. We have two one. Uh, four two. So we're just switching all these things. Switchy, switchy. Four, two. Oh, what is that? I'm trying to make a log. It didn't work. Oh, that's a pretty good log now that I know what it is. So we were one, two. Now we're two, one. Okay. And I'm going to get that negative one. Uh, negative one comma one half. One half comma negative one. Um, what's going to happen to that asymptote? Uh, well, the asymptote was y equals zero. So if we switch x and y, then our asymptote becomes x equals zero. Boom. And I think at this point we can graph this thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Explosion. And then we get that eight comma three. Boom. Oh, nice. You got that, it. That is the inverse of an exponential. Is it a function? Um, is there only one output for any one input? Yep. So if I, I, put, so. If I go to eight, I get three. I don't get three and negative three. You don't have a, a bad vending machine. Oh. It's also one to one, right? It is one to one, yeah. Because for every output, there's only one input. Mm -hmm. Its domain looks like it's all the positive numbers. Uh, yeah, I think so. Oh. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not satisfied with that infinity. This is why I used to do the circles. It's a little bit better. Which range which matches up which with the range of our our other side. Oh, I wrote it. Sorry. No, nope, no, you're good. You're good. Whoa. We're getting better at this. One day at a time. Um, range of our new function that does not have a name. It's all real numbers, right? All real numbers, which matches up with the domain of our exponential. Oh, I like how you wrote it. You wrote it a little bit different than me. Cool. I did all real numbers. Cool stuff, cool stuff. All right, so we have this new function. It's a function. I think it needs a name. What was that song that you were singing? <laughs> it's log, it's log. I'm so bad. It's, like, it's big, it's heavy, it's wood. You know, there's a song. <laughs> it's called the Log Song. It's from a show called Ren and Stimpy. I think I'll put it in the YouTube link. But I suggest everyone go listen to it. My students will be forced to listen to it before class. During class, we'll do some. We'll do. We'll do log problems. But this is a new function. It has a name. It is called the logarithm. The logarithm f of x is equal to, we abbreviate it with log as I've been getting at, log of x. We don't know much about this yet. Um, we need um, log base a. Well, so yeah, so this is the inverse of two to the x. The way we write that, it is, it is a log function with a base of two. It is a log function with a base of two. The thing that we've graphed here is completely dependent on two being the base. So we need to include that somewhere in our log notation. If you're introducing a new function, it's called the log function. Down here, I didn't write anything. What does that mean? Well, that means that we're going with the normal base that we always use for normal math, which is 10. <laughs> yeah. So. When no one writes a base there, we, that implies something. It implies that this came from the 10 to the x function. Right, so we have, we have um, up here, we have log base 2. That is the inverse of 2 to the x. Log x is actually the inverse of f of x equals 10 to the x. These two functions are inverses, log base 10 of x and 10 to the x. Oh, we have another one. Well, we have, we, let me write a few more. We have log base two. 
that is the inverse of two to the X. The base could be anything, pick a number. Uh, 17. That is the inverse of? 17 to the X. Right. And there's two more that I wanna bring up before we proceed. We're introducing a new function and a notation that's weird. Sorry for the dogs. I mean, the dogs, so no one's mad, but they are a lot. Um, how about log base one of X? Okay, I mean, that, that just seems kind of not that cool though. Cause like, what would that be the inverse of? One to the X power? And one to the anything is what? It's just one. Right, so that's just gonna be a horizontal line, except for at one point. Actually, no, wait. no, it's always going to just be one. Yeah. So not really an exponential. We, when we're defining the log function, when defining the log function, the base can be anything you want, except two things, actually. It can't be one. And what else can't it be? Actually, this, this, this set's infinite. It can't be one. What's another base that wouldn't make sense? Zero? Does a base of zero make any sense at all? Zero to the, I mean, it, it would also be a horizontal line of zero, except at zero, zero to the zero is called indeterminate. Check that out for your journal, everyone. I think we've asked them to look at that before. It comes up every now and then. But there's another thing. And this might be worth uh, making a whole new page about. Mm. We didn't talk about this beforehand, Mrs. Contreras, and I'm sorry about this, but B must be what? Well, it can be irrational, right? Like you can have irrational numbers. Yeah, you can have irrational for certain. We could, we could totally have log, kind of running out of room here, log base E of X. In fact, we have a special name for this. Natural log. Yeah, this is this. We instead of writing L O G base E of X, we write L N X for short. That'll be important, and we'll we'll talk about that in a second again. All right, E is a very important number when it comes to exponentials, as we saw last class. Is a very special one plus one over n to the n as n goes to infinity. That is what E is. It's going to have some really cool properties. But B must be positive, right? Why? What would, what would happen? I guess technically it doesn't, but that function is going to be bizarre. Let me, let's, let's graph this thing. Oh, look, I got an extra page completely unintentionally. Wow. Negative two to the X. What's that going to look like? Because is that, is that different from negative two to the yeah. x? Yeah, this does not equal negative two to the x. So the inverse of this thing would be log base negative two to the x, which I claim doesn't exist. We have this new function. We're, we're looking at some of the, its properties. We know its domain, we know its range. What is the um, possible base? What is, let's, let's plot some points for this. Give me some, give me some X values. Uh, zero. Zero, negative two to the zero is one. Uh, give me another X value. Uh, four. Four, negative two, oh, you give me negative two to the four is 16. I'm gonna run, I'm gonna run off the page. You're, you're messing with me here. Give me some more reasonable numbers. Uh, one. one, one okay, so one would be negative two, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. How about two? Two would give us positive four. How about the numbers in between zero, one, and two? Those are more annoying. Are they, they like even possible? Like what's negative two to the one half? Mm, not a thing. Mm. 
How about negative two to the two uh, to the two fourths? That's okay. That's going to be the absolute value. That's going to be mm -hmm. the square root of two, I think. Yeah. All right. So we've got some weird numbers happening with the fractions. How about weird. negative two to the? Um, let's do two thirds. That's okay. That's okay. So like some of these points work. Some of these points don't work. What about negative two to the E? Hmm. We can't have exponents, ne negative bases raised in exponent. We can technically, I mean, like it does work at some points, but it doesn't work it, in between zero and one. It works everywhere and doesn't work everywhere at the same time. It's like a state of superposition. Like it doesn't work at one half, it does work at two fourths. It does work at two thirds. It doesn't work at E. We don't even. That. Mm. So when we talk about logarithms, we are talking about the inverse of an exponential, of which the base is not zero, not one, and it must be positive. So I guess we could technically get rid of the zero and say a positive B value that is not one. A number, the base for a logarithm must be greater than zero and not one in order for it to make sense. The logarithm is the inverse of the exponential. Let's look at some examples, try to make more sense of this. Let's like start to develop a better understanding of logarithms. Here are a bunch of different logarithms on the left-hand side and their exponential form on the right-hand side. It is totally okay to, when learning about logs, think about the exponential form to make better sense of it. Hopefully, eventually, you look at a log and you just know what it is. Hopefully, it becomes an intuitive calculation, kind of like two to the five, an exponential, or like a square, or, or like a square root or a square. Like when I say, what's the square root of 16? You know it's four. You don't think about the exponent rules and hopefully logarithm becomes one of those things. Um, but training wheels are still on. We can convert in our brain to exponential form to make sense of it. Mr. Kirk, you want, can you like make the thing full with? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for pulling that up. For bringing that up. All right. I could probably even zoom in a little bit further, but I'm not gonna. Well, I'll have to zoom out later. All right. Can you talk to us? about a lot of these forms and the things you observe? Well, it looks like with all of the things on the left side with the logarithm form, what's the, what the input for the function is, is um, like the output for our exponential form. And the base doesn't seem to change, right? Which makes sense because that's mm -hmm. how we were figuring, that's how we're thinking through it. And, um, and it seems like we if we just think log base b of x equals y in our minds we're thinking b our base to what power gives us x so like if i wrote log base 2 of 32 what are you thinking in your brain i'm thinking through what powers of 2 do i know and is one of those 32. And I think it is, because two to the fifth is 32. So then our output there is gonna just be the exponent five. Now, I like what you said about like the, the output of our logarithmic form is the input of our exponential form. And likewise, the input of our logarithmic form is the output of our exponential form. That's like what an inverse function does, right? Yeah, it's just inputs and outputs are reversed. There's a lot of mnemonic, not a lot, but there's a couple of mnemonic devices out there that I don't know that help you convert to exponential form. But I think, I think the key here is just knowing that these two things are inverses. If you know that they're inverses, then all you need to do is switch the input and the output in the functions. One thing that I like to do when I'm writing it down is mm -hmm. that I think about like a little snail. So I just- You want to draw it? Yeah. So, oh, I like yeah, that. Right, because then you get like a little snail happening, a log snail. 
Oh, I see um, it. But oh. you're saying two to the fifth power equals 32. Like that's the path of what the snail shell is. Oh, I like that a lot. That's good. Anyway. It, it is totally cool to rewrite an exponential form. These, these, these functions are related. And it might actually be useful later when we graph some logarithms. Um, the second one doesn't have a base. What the heck's going on there? Well, that means that it was just base 10, right? That's what we were talking about before. And then right below that, we have a natural log of x equals y. So that means that our base is the e, which we can see from what's on the right. Um, we pretty much talked about log base 2 of 16 mm -hmm. equals 4 with the log base 2 of 32 over mm -hmm. on the side. Um, and then these two, the next two, they seem pretty similar because we're just, we're effectively just looking at old reliable. That old reliable yeah. or where it went. Right, right. Because if we have any base raised to the zero power, that gives us one. No matter what, if it's 10 or if it's nice, a snail. 10 to the zero gives you one. Three to the zero gives you one. So like... I guess we can combine these two things into log base. This is what you're saying, right? Yes. Yeah. So that's or, like our new old reliable point for when we're thinking about things. So when, later on when we're graphing logarithms and we have like log of X plus five, what value for X is gonna give you zero? Uh, negative four, I think. Because what's ever inside our log, we need that to be one. And what makes x plus five one? Negative four. Boom, we're already solving logarithmic equations. That's mm -hmm. legit. Solving logarithmic equations, that's a tough thing to do. Um, but knowing little things like um, getting it equal to zero, that's been a major part of solving equations for us this entire year and for the past 2,000 years. Setting things equal to zero, logarithms too. <laughs> you know, like, 2,000 years. 2,000 years. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, what else is going on here? Uh, well, when we have, like, what's inside our log as a fraction, we can still handle that as long as we, like, don't lose our minds because <laughs> we have negative exponents and that gives us rational things, right? So, like, 10 to the negative 1 power gives us 1 tenth. And I think it's important to, like, mention that like, if I have, mm, we're allowed to plug in fractions into the logarithm function. Like, remember our domain? It's all positive numbers. Yeah, I can, we can plug in fractions. Fractions are not a problem. And when you plug in a fraction, let me go back up. Sorry, I keep going back and forth. When you plug in a fraction between 0 and 1, what are you going to get? What's your output? Very gonna? negative. Yeah, negative. Very negative numbers. If you plug in a fraction larger than one, you're going to get a positive number. But if you're plugging in a fraction between zero and one, you are going to be getting a negative number. What happens when you plug in a negative number? Uh, it doesn't work because that's not in our domain. Right? If I have like log base 10 of negative six. Mr. Kirk, you're just trying to get out of doing that last problem. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's log base three. I, d I did not even, it must have been in my um, my memory. I didn't even realize it was negative six. But I'm just going to get out of doing that problem. Log <laughs> base three of negative six. There's nothing on that graph that gives us, sorry, negative six is not part of that domain. Three to the what gives you negative six? Nothing that we know of. Yeah, the, the, the range of the exponential function is all positive numbers. If you, are, if you feel good with exponentials, then logarithms are hopefully going to be a piece of cake. Is that a cake? <laughs> so it's like a cake. <laughs> There's some delicious cakes made in the food project. I want to shout out to everyone who made cake. Shout out to everyone who made something awesome. A lot of cakes. Cookies too. All right. Um, what's going on down here with these decimals and these well, approximately symbols? Approximations are okay. We're okay with approximations because that's pretty much that's how like most math happens. Like applied math is pretty much all approximations. Yeah, you get still better math. approximations, but still approximations. So, like if you're taking the natural log of fifty, 
That means you're taking E, which is irrational, and you're raising it to some power to get out 50. Might be kind of difficult. You might not be able to get like exactly what that number is, but E raised to 5.9, uh, 3.912 is approximately 50, and that's mm -hmm. okay. And then down here, right, log base E of 7.389, E raised to the 2 is 7.389. And that like vaguely makes sense, right? Because we know that E is 2.718. 2.718 squared is going to be less than nine, but more than four. Seven is in that range. And we're like mostly okay with that. And I guess the last thing that I'll add is we need to be okay with these approximations in order for our original curve to be smooth. We don't want that weird craziness happening that I did on the last page. We need it, we want it to be smooth. There's a lot of advantageous, so, so it's okay to raise irrational numbers to integers and raise integers to irrational numbers. Wanna do some problems? Let's do it. All right, I'm gonna take the top. <laughs> All right. Because okay. I, already did, I already did three to the uh, log base three of negative six. That's fair. Uh -huh. It uh, does not exist. It is the null set. But I think I told I, I said a while ago that the null set would be that. But anyways, I'll do the top row. You do the bottom row. We'll talk sure. about it after. Sounds good. All right. We got to show enough work that someone is convinced that we're thinking, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, nice. So when you like pause and think, then it like comes up. Oh. In terms of uh, rate of completing problems, you're faster than me. Oh, well. Who cares about speed? It's fine. It doesn't well. matter. <laughs> All right. Um, let's let's um, talk about these. You want to look at what I did, try to make sense of my problems, and then I'll try to do the same with yours. So for A, you're looking at log base 2 of 8 equals what? And I really like how you put in x there, because I did not do that. I just evaluated. Um, but giving the space for 2 to the x power equals 8, because you switched it into exponential form, thought to yourself, what is 8? 2 to what power is 8? 2 to the third power is 8, so then you found that x equals 3. It's very it's very um, meticulous the way you went through it, and I can really see your process, which I really like. Um, that is a good amount of work shown. For a log base 5 of 1 over 25, you rewrote it as your exponential form, again with your x, love it, it's pretty great. Um, and you have 1 over 25, you remember that 25 is 5 squared, so you have the reciprocal of 5 squared, reciprocal, the reciprocator, <laughs> <laughs> means that you have a negative exponent, so you have 5 to the negative 2 equals 1 over 25, so x equals negative 2, and with log base 9 of 3, I think this might be one of the first times that we're dealing with a base that's bigger than what's inside the function. Um, so that's exciting. And so you thought to yourself, okay, let's rewrite that as 9 to the x power equals 3. And then how can we make that happen? Well, 9 is 3 squared. So then 3 to the 2x power equals 3 to the first power. And then you solve for x by just taking that, taking what's in the exponents, setting them equal to each other, solve for x, you get 1 half, and you're happy with your x equals 1 half. And we talked about that one. That's just that doesn't exist. 
I'm a big fan of setting the exponents equal. I think that's cool. And, and I don't know. So I like to do it. Let's check out how you did it. Okay, so we got ln e to the 15. Um, ln e to the 15. And then you wrote 15. I am having a little... Um, hmm. What is, what is the, um, the underline here? So I was thinking to myself, well, we have the same base. Then the natural log and E are both the same bases. And since they're inverses, they're going to undo each other. So that effectively like took that away. But then I realized that I just had rewritten something and underlined it, which doesn't really help whoever's reading it. So I rewrote um, underneath that E to the 15 is going to be E to the 15, trying to follow the pattern of doing like this the thing that you were doing with the X's in the exponents, uh, but maybe less effectively. No, no, I, I, you, you said something that I think we need to say. This is going to go in red. It's like alert, alert. You said that when, if you have two functions, ln X, which is bit log base E X, and let's call it G of X, E to the X. You said when you compose them, what do you get? Well, you get out your identity function, right? That's like how we define, that's, an, that's one of the ways that we checked if our functions were inverses, is you compose them, you get out the identity. Ln of e to the x is equal to x. Similarly, e to the ln x is equal to x. We need to take note of that. That is that's 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 profound. I think that's going to be really useful later. Ln base e of e to the x is x. So that's what I feel like you use down here. Ln e of e to the fifteen is fifteen. Fifteens are x. Mm -hmm. I feel like we can use these on like a. We're going to be able to use that a lot. All right. And the second one, you you said you didn't do the x, but you did do a box. I like that. E to the what gives you one? You know that's zero. So then you're rewriting that, that ln of one, that is zero. Eight to the what gives you one, still zero. So we know that log base eight of one is zero. And on this last one, it's similar to the first one, right? Log base six of six to the eight, log base six of six to the X is X and eight is our X here. I like that a lot. Cool. Cool. We did we eight log problems. Boom, boom, boom. I like I that like, activity. That was fun. And I also like this part that I'm boxing in green. I like how that looks like um they don't look like sixes, they look like b's. So log base b of b to the x equals x. Boom. Generalized. Boom. And Carmen the Frog Green. Mm -hmm. We're back. Super frog. The goal is that the log function becomes just one of the other functions that you know. Just because it's new doesn't mean, like, you, at one point in your life, I'm not saying, well, at one point in our life, like, fractions didn't make sense. But now we, like, juggle fractions like they're, you know, I don't know. We, we, we deal with fractions like we've always known them. I hope that E, and, and pi is a good example. Like, at one point, pi, irrational numbers, that's, but then that now we're super comfortable with pi. Hopefully E and the log function become just like that. Just another thing that you're fluent with, like a language. It's really what we're doing is we're, math is really just a language class in disguise. It's really not is. that disguised. Um, <laughs> it's true. Writing system. <laughs> yeah, it's true. All right, um, let's grab some stuff and then we'll get out of here. All right, we had to take a quick break, but we are back and we are about to graph some logarithms. What? All right, so we don't really have any techniques yet. That's the goal here, these three problems. Um, let's graph the one that we already know, graph one that we don't know using inverses because I that is what these are rooted in. These are simply the inverse of the exponential. Let's get the exponential and then graph that and then graph it. its inverse. We'll have something to work with to establish some rules. Can we say maybe that that's what they're based in? Yes. All right, here we go. <laughs> so we got y equals log base 2 of x. How do I find the inverse? Uh, you just switchy-switchy. Switchy-switchy. So switchy. x equals log base 2 of y. 
-hmm. 2 to the x power equals y is equivalent to that. Oh, I did that wrong. We have a backward snail right now. Nice. Right? 2 to the x is equal to y. We just got the inverse function. This is the inverse function. I actually find finding the inverses of exponentials pretty straightforward, or inverses of log, because you're just using those rules, that snail rule. All right, so we got 2 to the x. Let's graph that. Oh, liable. Two, Zero, one. One half. All right, let's get that asymptote as well. All right, this is our inverse. I can get that one. I can get that one. Cool. <laughs> just, All right. You know, that line it. There you go. You're so against the law of large dots, <laughs> but you're a fan of the fat line it. You know. Double standards. All right. Um, <laughs> A little bit of switchy switchy in terms of points. So we got what, zero, one, one, zero. We got uh, one, two. So we got two, one. And we have negative one coming one half. Sorry, so we have uh, one half coming negative one. This is nice. our inverse function. All right, our all reliable. What do we what do we plug into the exponential to get all reliable? We plugged in zero, so and we got out one. So in our logarithm, we're gonna plug in one and get out zero. That's all reliable for logarithms. And I'm gonna draw in the um, the line y equals x just so we have it for good measure. Nice. So ooh, and a straight line tool, cool. And then when we're dealing with logarithms, we practice it a little bit. What are some numbers you could plug into that that would be easy to graph? Log base two of what? what? What's what are some convenient numbers? Powers of two. Powers so of two, right? Plug in four, you get out two. Plug in eight, you get out three. Plug in one half, you get out negative. Wait. Yeah. Plug getting, in one half, get out. Yeah. yeah. We'll get negative one because the log of negative numbers, sorry, the log of fractions less than one are negative. Can you take over B? Yeah. So, well, how do we how do we figure out what like what's the inverse here? So let's let's do the switch y, switchy switchy. Let's see if we can figure this out. So we got y is log base one half of x plus three minus two, and then switchy switchy for x equals log base one half mm -hmm. of y plus three minus two. So can you help me solve? Yeah. So I think. Before we do the conversion, we can't do the conversion until the log is by itself. So let's get that negative two to the other side. Well, let's let's add two to both sides to to isolate the log function. So isolate the log base one half. Yeah, isolate the log base one half of y plus three. So we got x plus 2 equals log base 1 half. I'm totally going to write a space for space. Y plus 3. I think there's a way to slide it over. Go up to the arrow. Or you can just take that and move it like that. Nice. I'd probably get rid of that or not. It's fine. Just well, now you got the space. All right. Um, and can, can you actually rewrite it so I can see it better? I guess so, Mr. Kirk. For you. I would, I would very much appreciate it. So we have what? Uh, y plus three. Yeah. Cool. And that x plus two, that's like its own object. It's a binomial. Let's treat it like a single object and let's do the snail. Okay. So snail it. I feel like that's a snail. I was going to say, like, it sounds like a dance. Do the snail. Do the snail. I'm sorry. <laughs> we just miss being in, like, brick and mortar school because that's, so that's where all these, I'm getting like, stir crazy, man. That's where the silly, like, dances come out. All right. Um, but all right so we're, we're close. Look, one half to the x plus two. Subtract that three of both sides. We got our exponential. We can graph it. We can get the, uh, we can get the log function. We can establish some final rules, and then we can graph uh, one of the ones at the bottom uh, without doing this inverse business. 
So let's see. How are we going to graph one half to the x plus two minus three? Overliable. Overliable. Okay. Yeah, Sounds get good. that negative two comma negative three is overliable. Okay. I switched to the line tool. That was foolish. Okay. And which way is our is our graph going to go? Hey, you're crabbing me. <laughs> It kind of looks like a spider. Which way is our graph going to go? Well, before we do that, can we get an asymptote? I guess, yeah, that's why I, I remember. was thinking of the, uh, the line tool. Okay, so where's our asymptote? Negative? Negative three, right? The, I think we talked about last video that the only thing that affects a horizontal asymptote is the vertical shift. Mm -hmm. And let's make that uh, a dashed line. Oh, I, I, made, a, I made a mistake. That, that green point is wrong, but that's my fault. When you plug in negative two, one half to the zero is one minus three is negative two. So negative, negative two coming. Negative negative two. Yeah, oh, yeah, I bet. It's cool, no worries. We'll throw a question in there that says like, Mr. Cook made a mistake, what's the mistake? Anyways, <laughs> um, let's get two more points. I'm thinking about things I can actually take the exponent of. Um, a negative one would be nice. Right. Because one half to the negative one is a two minus three is negative one. So what will give me negative one in the exponent? Negative three, right? Negative three. Mm -hmm. So negative three comma negative one. Cool. Boom. Okay. And now we kind of we have our um, our trajectory. Mm -hmm. But think, you know, now we need three points. We can't just yeah. do it with two. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um. Doo -doo -doo -doo. And if I plug in a net, if I get a negative two in the exponent, I'm going to get a net one half to the negative two, which is four minus three is one. So what, what's going to give me negative two, negative four. So negative four comma one, negative four comma one. Boom. There it is. Right, let's connect oh my gosh. Remember how one half is the reflection of two? Remember how one half to the X is the reflection of two? Yes. This looks like a reflected two to the x. Maybe we should have just done that. Maybe we should have made it two to the negative x minus two. Yeah. Oh, well. Whatever. Yeah. That's okay. Whatever. All right. Cool. So now how do we graph our inverse? Yeah. Um, we, to graph our inverse, we just need to reflect everything over the line y equals x. So that asymptote, it becomes, it was y equals negative three. Now it's going to be x equals negative three. Okay. Cool. And um, negative two comma negative two stays negative two, negative two. Oh, that's nice. Isn't it? It's right there on the line y equals x. So yeah. Okay. Cool. And then um, negative three comma negative one becomes negative one comma negative three. Awesome. And then a negative four comma one becomes one comma negative four. One. I think I just oh, made I a realization. I didn't do those in the order that you did. That's okay. Which I one did I, I miss? miss? One that. comma negative four. And you did do them in the order I said. I only have two points. One comma negative four is the one you're missing? I bet. I bet. Do you remember saying that? Yes, all the time. Oh, I <laughs> bet. And then it turned into like ard bet. Uh, it, was, it was the whole thing. I don't think I remember that, but that sounds Whatever. interesting. Right, I made a realization. Mm -hmm. The vertical shift is the thing that affected the um, asymptote in exponentials. The only mm -hmm. thing that affected the asymptote in an exponential function is the vertical shift. The only thing that affects a logarithm function, so asymptote, is the horizontal shift. Because it has a vertical asymptote. Mm -hmm. Yep. So Makes that sense. negative, well, actually, you know what? Uh, the horizontal shift is not the only thing that's going to affect it necessarily. If we have a dilation, I think it might affect it. A horizontal dilation. If we shift to and then dilate, it's going to. I guess it depends on if you're written it in standard form. Yeah. Yep. B times parentheses x minus h. Mm -hmm. If that's the case, the only thing that affects it is a horizontal shift. Right? Cool. I think the asymptote is also where the argument is zero, right? Which is, isn't that, that totally makes sense, right? Because something raised to what power is going to give you up zero, nothing. Mm -hmm. That's when it gets to, 
in, in this case, positive infinity. Sweet. So we got, we got, I think we got some um, strategies to graph these, this, this, this next one, and then we'll close out this video. Do we need to talk about any of like the properties and stuff? What are you thinking? Uh, exercise for the viewer. We do like the check mark ones. Uh, oh, we're going to have, I have a really cool assignment that we'll do later about fractional bases, non-fractional bases, negative, because it's a mix and match thing. We'll do this later. Let's cool. go ahead and go down to this last one and try to do it with the training wheels off. All right. Oh, and I'm the stroller. <laughs> I'm like, why are you strolling? I try. <laughs> All right. So we just established some things. Mm -hmm. um, vertical asymptote. This is a logarithm. Exponentials have horizontal, logs have vertical. The vertical asymptote is going to be when that argument is zero slash the horizontal shift. What's the horizontal shift here? Is it three to the right or the left? That's so. Remember that thing that you you pointed out that I had forgotten the the, the standard form. Mm -hmm. Let's get this thing in standard form. Do you mind if I write it? Sure. Two log base four of and by standard form, I mean in like its transformational form. Negative parentheses x minus three. Like a properly factored. Yeah. yeah. So that x is positive in, in, in its most nested form, if that makes any sense. Right, so now with the horizontal shift is the thing that tells us where the asymptote. So it's going to be positive three. But if this confuses you guys, just figure out what makes this zero. Three. Three is where our vertical asymptote is going to be. Um, do you want me to write it? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. I wanted to make sure that you weren't prepared to, to line drop me. Oh. Boom. All right. Um, what else can we do here? Well, we know, uh, like, when are we going to have zero? <gasps> we know that's the reciprocator. When are we going to uh, have? Oh, reliable. Oh, reliable. Oh, reliable. Four um, to the zero. Oh, but it's going to be shifted, right? Because we have one times two. Yeah. So I think what we need to. Four is what gives us, wait a second. When, 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 what do we need the argument to be to get all reliable? We need the input to be one. Right. So that the output is zero. Yes. Yeah, so we need to plug in two, right? Two, positive two. Positive two times negative one is negative two plus three is one which in all of our examples, zero, 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 zero. And then zero times two is zero, right? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Plug in two, we get zero. Logs are difficult. If, 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 if the viewer is confused a little bit, practice makes it better. And doing it with friends. And also being comfortable Not with friends. like being confused. Mm -hmm. you know, and pushing through the confusion. I don't know why I'm making so many like wrestling move sounds. Anyways, all right. Um, so we plugged in two. We got one. The log of base four. Who cares? Log base a million of one is always zero. Zero times two is zero. What is a um, another good point we could plug in with that base of four? Mm, what are some other like powers of four that we could get? Four, right? Four, yeah. So four is power four. Four. We need seven. I think negative one, right? Negative, negative one times negative one is one plus three is four. Yep. Yeah. It looks like because logs don't cross the asymptote. It's true. We can only plug in things less than three. We have a domain here. It's negative infinity to three, so we can plug that stuff in. Four is over here. Doesn't exist. So we plug in negative one, we're gonna get four. Log base four of four, four one. to the one gives me one, times two. Times two is two. There you go. And let's get one more point just to exercise our logarithm points and then we will deuce out. Deuce, deuce out? Deuces, that's what um, people say, right? Hmm? Yeah, but deuce out, I never heard that. Now you know, I made it up, it's my thing. You can't okay. have it. Okay. Just kidding, you can have it. I'll try. Um, what's another good point? What's another good point? Mm, 
Well, will 16 fit on our graph? Only if we had changed the scale. We didn't change the scale. Regret. Can we, can we not be scared of fractions? I guess so. Yeah, not being scared of fractions is a healthy way of being in a relationship yeah. with fractions. Um, what? So what, what is a good fraction for base four? Mm, well, negative one, right? Because we would, or like to get one fourth. Yeah, if we can get one fourth in the argument, then we'll get negative one and then we'll get negative two. Mm -hmm. So what gives us one fourth? What, uh, what times negative one plus three? We can, we, it, it is totally fine, viewer, to set up this equation. Subtract three. You know, I'm 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 going to fractions. Twelve fourths. Yep. You know, I don't want to get rid of all my work. Cool. Negative eleven fourths. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, and then x is equal to eleven fourths. Eleven fourths gives us negative one, and then negative one times two gives us negative two. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 gives us negative 2. Two points tells us how this graph is curving. So two points is like nice, but I really think that the extra effort that we're putting into our brains to get that third point is helping us develop our understanding of logs. I think three points, the reason why I want three points is so that you're practicing logs a little bit more and veering off into things that might be uncomfortable. Let's do this curve. You know, I've been on my toes this entire time waiting for another crab. I I just been like really excited about logs. I don't know. <laughs> should we should we uh, deuce out with uh, the log song? <laughs> no. Okay. All right. <laughs> we we'll leave this last one for you guys. Hands or something. We should be the uh, like yay. We should like crab away. <laughs> And then like come in. <laughs> we'll do that in just a second. But this last one, we'll leave this for you guys. We got a base of E. We got some vertical shifts, some horizontal shifts, some reflections. Um, good luck. All right, ready? You're gonna do great. Gonna <laughs> You're do gonna great. right. Stop share. We're gonna crab out. And then I'm going to from the back of the thing. Ready? All right. Wait, it's really hard. There's no space. Ah. I'm just gonna. <laughs>